marriage between Britain and continental Europe, this is the world's busiest shipping lane. All ships in the Dover Strait, this is Dover Coast Guard. Look at this drop showing at 7 decimal 6 meters. 34 kilometers across at its shortest point, this blue motorway comes with its own strict rules of the road. Coast guards on both sides of the water are on duty to enforce them 24-7. There are currently nine cross-channel swim attempts in the southwest lane. Vessels are advised to proceed with caution and keep a sharp look. Well, the nature of the vessel traffic in the Dover Strait, it, it will literally carry anything and everything. We're monitoring the vessel traffic that's transiting the strait. We're doing this job in collaboration with our French colleagues um, as an international waterway. Could I have your last port of call and destination ever? Primarily with the with the Dover Strait, uh, the, the vessels transiting from the north down to the southwest pass on the English side of the Dover Strait in a designated lane. And conversely on the French side, the vessels travelling to the northeast uh, travel that side. The main rule of the road that we have uh, issues with is crossing. Uh, some vessels seem to think that they can cross at whatever angle they like. It's like a motorway, and uh, as you can imagine, if you were trying to creep across a motorway, it would be very difficult for the oncoming traffic to work out what they're doing. Over a 24-hour period, about 500 vessels from all corners of the globe sail along the channel. In addition to the heavy east-west traffic, ferries crisscross the strait, linking France to Britain. To avoid collision, vessels use AIS technology, and this allows captains to know the exact position, course, and speed of every craft at sea. The automated identification system is a useful tool for the likes of Captain David Miller, who is at the helm of Spirit of Britain. 16.8 knots, and we're running clear of the four buoy, flood tide on the buoy, setting us up onto it. Over 200 meters long, this passenger ferry can carry up to 20,000 people every day between France and England. That's a ship. She is the equivalent of the new A380 Airbus. She's the largest uh, ship that can operate from Dover Calais. Um, I mean, the way I describe it, it's, it's a bit like driving um, a Porsche in the centre of London. You've got a hugely powerful piece of equipment and you have to manoeuvre it through the buses, the taxis, but you're ably assisted by some very fine equipment. Equipment paired with a good sense of seamanship. As long as everybody observes the rules, then there is room for us all. After a 45 minute turnaround in Calais, the ship is ready to set off once more. On these busy waters, traffic and weather conditions are ever changing. On the other side of the channel, fog is descending on the cliffs of Dover. crossing the English Channel for thousands of years by ship, but since 1994, they can also make that journey by train. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Channel Tunnel, a marvel of engineering deep beneath these waters. Today, St. Pancras International is London's gateway to Europe. One million people flock here every week. From this station, the Eurostar high-speed train heads south, under the sea, and onto the continent. Now, the idea for a tunnel connecting Britain to mainland Europe was first conceived more than 200 years ago, but today, these Eurostar trains carry 10 million passengers a year between London to Paris, Brussels, and beyond. For 18 minutes, we plunge into darkness, traveling over 50 kilometers in the world's longest undersea tunnel. One of three, two for rail traffic and one for service and maintenance. Tranchée de Bessang on the French side is a junction where all three tunnels 
emerge. And at peak times, a train comes through here every two minutes. In a dark control room at the UK terminal, staff watch over the Eurostar shuttle and freight trains all traveling through the tunnel. Here is a full board. It shows every single train that's in the tunnel at any one time. We know within 100 meters um, exactly where any train is, how fast it's going, and where it's supposed to be going. From the rolling stock to the railway tracks, it takes about 800 people to maintain the channel tunnel. in Coquel in northern France is home to the world's longest workshop. Every month or so, a Eurotunnel shuttle, all 800 meters of it, comes here for a much-needed pit stop. Trains like these carry an average of 7 million people every year, so out on the platform, troubleshooters make sure they remain in tip-top condition. On this kind of train, uh, a wheel can do 1.2 million of kilometers. So it's important to uh, look after the grease on the wheel. And we have to be very quick because, you know, the train is there just for 26 minutes, not more. And it's at night that workers head deep beneath the ground and under the sea. As traffic subsides, only one of the two commercial tunnels remains open. We've got uh, a north tunnel, a south tunnel, and then running in between those two tunnels, we have a service tunnel. Tonight, the south tunnel is completely out of service, um, whilst maintenance works we're doing. We have to make sure that we are back on commercial service with both tunnels at a specific time tomorrow morning, and uh, I'm, I'm 5.50 is our, is our cut-off this morning. really the nerve center of the operations here. It's where the maintenance workers and the troubleshooters are based, and they use specially designed vehicles like this to respond to any emergency. And if you step over here, right behind this door, is where all those trains are whipping by. After traveling the length of this 50-kilometer artery, French and British teams swarm over the tunnel. Tonight, they are on cleaning duty. The full tunnel train works every weekend. As the trains come in, they pick up a lot of dirt from the outside, especially tonight's like, to, you know, now, rain. The rain brings in lots of dirt and dust that sticks to the trains. It can cause all sorts of problems, but it never does because we do it so regularly. With the help of the most powerful of machines, 72,000 litres of water will be jet sprayed to give this underground network a deep clean. seeing now keeps your tunnel running. If it wasn't for the maze on the side that you see now, um, your tunnel would drive through a hole. We've got um, over 100 kilometers of track in the two tunnels put together. Just the lighting, the, the cooling, the, the electronics, the fire detection, the cleaning equipment, it's, it's, it can go on and on and on. Every day, officials say the tunnel plays host to 400 train journeys. 50,000 people and 550,000 tons of goods and will soon become even busier. Eurostar has invested heavily to expand its fleet and by 2015 German operator Deutsche Bahn will commence its service through the tunnel increasing passenger numbers by a further three to four million a year. We have the capability to manage all this additional traffic. This is our responsibility to give to either British citizens and continent people more possibility to cross easily and very quickly through the channel. We are at the heart of the European high speed network. <laughs> just two and a half hours to go from the streets of London to the boulevards of Paris. And there are now even more ambitious plans to expand the railway network on both sides of the Channel Tunnel. That means connecting more people and more businesses across Europe. That's it for this month's edition of The Gateway. I'm Atika Schubert. Join us next month when we go to Hong Kong.
to unlock another global gateway.